Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, unfortunately, we're talking about another potential hurricane threat in the Gulf of Mexico for the Florida West Coast. Um, this is Tropical Storm Milton. Over the western Gulf of Mexico, you can see we have uh, some uh, some convection firing near the eye wall right now, or the uh, developing eye wall. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on to see if if that um, starts if it starts to intensify more. Right now, it's 60 miles an hour. Um, it's pretty unusual to have a storm in this location, kind of move off to the east-northeast toward Florida, but that's what it looks like is going to happen here. So um, just because it hasn't really happened much, at least recently, doesn't mean it can't happen here. So got to keep that in mind uh, over the next couple days. So we're going to look at the visible satellite now. You can see we got um, deep convection uh, firing here over the near the center now, so that's a sign that it's probably starting to intensify a little bit um, over the next uh, you know 12 to 24 hours. Then we're going to look at the, the recon. This is um, the NOAA plane this morning. You can see that they're finding pressures in the low 990s, um, winds um, 55, 60 miles an hour, so um, moderate to strong tropical storm and strengthening. Um, so it's, it's kind of doing as forecast, maybe even gains. I think they're a little bit quicker. Um, if we look at some of the model forecasts, this is the uh, ECMWF. Um, you can see this is the, the vorticity, so kind of spin. You can see this, this does get a little bit close um, to the Yucatan Peninsula here. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If it, if it does get a little bit too close to that, that could slow it down a little bit. Um, but then, you know, there's no, no guarantee that's going to happen. We saw the same thing with Helene, and it, unfortunately it didn't really end up slowing it down too much. And then the Euro brings it in um, on late Wednesday into Thursday towards um, the Tampa Bay Ridge of South um, Manatee, Sarasota County. If you look at other models like the GFS, um, they're a little bit further north and bring it in more towards the Tampa Bay, Pasco, Pinellas County area. All along the west coast is is in the um, possible impact from this, and you know the landfall is still um, pretty uncertain. It'll be somewhere along the west coast here, uh, but just uh, if you live in these, these areas, today is the day to prepare, to think about your evacuation plan, to listen to officials, and make sure you're ready to stay safe from this system. If we look at some of the factors that'll be controlling the uh, intensity, um, we can see that the Gulf of Mexico um, is still very warm. You're going to have the storm moving kind of in this general direction over waters that are um, 30 to 31 Celsius, so 85, 86, 87 Fahrenheit. Very warm. Helene was moving fast, so it didn't cool the Gulf much. Um, and then uh, the other thing that happened is, is that you have this um, area of deep warm water for the loop current coming out of the Caribbean, so it'll be moving over that, which could give it a boost. The net downside for intensification will be um, sort of embedded in this westerly upper level wind. So um, if you look at the uh, the, the, this 200 millibar is kind of the level where jets fly. So this is the jet streak right here. So this is going to try to, you know, aid outflow, sort of help the storm ventilate itself and strengthen as it moves over the Gulf. But then you'll have this westerly shear kind of pushing in and, and trying to sort of erode the backside of the storm. And so which of these factors sort of wins out probably is going to determine how strong this is at landfall. And if we look at the potential, some of the potential um, tracks for this, you, this is the GFS ensemble. So again, the, the slightly different versions of the model, um, just to give you an idea of the spread, you can see we have spread all the way from up in the, the Cedar Key area to maybe Naples. So somewhere along the West Coast, the majority seem to be sort of in the Tampa Bay area here um, or just south, but um, all along the West Coast needs to be prepared for impacts, um, especially for surge to you know, near into the south of where the center makes landfall. The ECMWF Euro Ensemble, kind of the same idea, um, out to day six, you can see um, kind of clustered on the Tampa Bay area, maybe a little bit south, um, some of them. Well, you can see as they go that the stronger members look like they're going to kind of get pulled a little bit more north, uh, potentially interacting with a, a shortwave trough here a little bit more, and uh, um, kind of maybe a little bit more of a northeast turn here toward the Tampa Bay area. So that's something to keep in mind um, for that region is, you know, if it does get a little stronger, you might see a bit more of a north hook here. To look at some of our hurricane models, this is the HWARF. This is one of NOAA's hurricane models for a while. You can see it shows it getting organized today, strengthening very quickly just north of the Yucatan. And then it brings um, the storm up near the Tampa Bay region um, by Thursday. You can see there's some asymmetry. You know, this, that shear is eroding the backside, but this would be a very <coughs> uh, bad situation for Tampa, obviously. One thing, though, is to note that, you know, this landfall location is going to be important because if, it, if this comes in um, just to the north of Tampa here, like let's say the landfall is up here, you're going to have all this water channeled up into the bay, and that would be a horrible storm surge in Tampa, and you'd still have surge you know, down here further south as well. Whereas at the center, um, let's delete this. If the center comes in, say, you know, down here more toward Manatee or Sarasota County, 
Then you'll have a lot of water up into that region, into Charlotte Harbor. Um, but you'll actually have winds coming out of the bay and negative storm surge, kind of like we saw in Irma. Um, so you, where the center comes in is going to be really important for Tampa Bay, certainly, and seeing which of this area, which region sees the, the, the worst impacts from storm surge. But we're also going to have, uh, you know, all the other hazards as well. You know, we, I, let me see if I have the wind here. Um, yeah, so you can see that there's a you know, large area of strong winds. Uh, you're going to have, um, if we go back to the, the simulated radar, you can see, if we go, let's see where it's near Florida. You can see these bands here. Those can produce tornadoes. Um, the other difference with this storm is that it's going to be moving inland rather than crossing, or it's going to cross the state rather than just uh, move up the coast. So this is going to be an inland event for central Florida as well, central south Florida, maybe even north Florida with some of this rain north of the center. So, uh, and lots of rain out ahead of the storm this week as a stalled front is draped across the area. So very set up for flooding, storm surge, flooding rain, tornadoes, strong winds. All the hazards that you associate with the hurricanes are going to be present with this one. And another depiction, this is our half B model. This is one of the models that I've been working on. You can see it's it's a little bit weaker um, at the landfall. It kind of drops off a little bit more. But And that's something we could see with this is we could see a weaken in the eastern Gulf. But you really can't count on that because if it gets really strong, even if it weakens you know, some, you're going to have a lot of water piled up. You're still going to have a lot of winds. So hopefully it does weaken you know, coming in and doesn't kind of maintain itself all the way to the coast. But... We can't really count on that, and, and impacts are going to be present either way. Um, you can see this this particular solution comes in sort of just north of Tampa Bay, which, like we talked about, would sort of be the, the worst-case scenario in terms of, of uh, surge for the bay. So we have to watch the trends and see where things um, try to actually make landfall. And you can see, again, here with the wind, uh, this kind of just illustrates it, that if you did get a landfall just to the north of Tampa Bay, you'd have um, all this wind. Uh, let's delete that all this wind sort of pushing the water into the bay and you still have a lot of surge down here to the south over Manatee and Sarasota counties as well. So if you live in a surge prone area, you definitely need to take this seriously. Also mobile homes, anywhere low lying prone to flooding. If you have trees in your backyard that could fall, you might want to consider um, finding a safer place to ride this one out later this week. So just please be safe um, this week. That's the main thing. You know, we want everyone to stay safe. I know a lot of places are still dealing with the cleanup after Helene here, but unfortunately we have another major threat on our hands. Lastly, we're going to show the National Hurricane Center forecast. So uh, you can see this is the cone of uncertainty. One thing to know is this is not an impacts cone. So this is not saying, you know, if you look outside this, like, you know, here in South Florida, we're probably still going to get some rain from this regardless, maybe some wind, even if the center doesn't move right over us. Uh, but this is just sort of based on historical um, errors where the, will the center, you know, the center is likely to be somewhere in this area between the Big Bend and maybe Naples um, on Wednesday and a Thursday. And, you know, if we look at the, the models, uh, maybe even, you know, honing a little bit more on this region, sort of um, near or just south of the Tampa Bay area, it seems to be the most likely at this point. But, you know, it could be a little further south. It could be down here towards Charlotte Harbor again. It could be a little further north up towards uh, Cedar Key, Pasco, Hernando counties. We could see something right into the bay. Um, we don't know. But one thing to remember, too, is that let's say it comes in, let's say it comes in near the, near the middle of this right now near Tampa Bay. You're still going to see a lot of storm surge and a lot of wind down here to the south over Fort Myers, Charlotte Harbor. So I know you're still probably dealing, you know, in some areas with just rec finishing, recovering from Hurricane Ian two years ago. But unfortunately, it could be another storm surge event here as well. So like I said, listen to officials. If you're told to evacuate, evacuate. If you're not sure, if, you know, if you're 50-50, just go. Find a friend, find a shelter, find somewhere safe to go. You can always, um, you know, come back and clean up as necessary, but we really want people to be safe from this. So um, stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center and trusted local sources for the uh, latest and make sure you're getting your information from trustworthy sources um, in times like this. And I hope everybody stays safe.